Hello and welcome, my name is Dr. K. In today's video, we will examine five gate deviations specific to the knee joint complex, secondary to knee joint impairments. Let's get into it. The first gate deviation that we will observe is rapid knee extension after initial contact. This is also known as knee extensor thrust. Let's take a look. The typical impairment here is spasticity of the quadricep muscle, possibly secondary to the upper motor neuron lesion. Depending on the status of posterior structures of the knee, it may occur with or without knee hyperextension. The next deviation that we will observe is knee remaining in extension during the loading response of the gait cycle. Here we will not see a knee extensor thrust. The typical impairment here is weakness of the quadricep muscle. This can be secondary to femoral nerve palsy or L3 L4 compression neuropathy. It can also be secondary to knee pain, with a pathological precursor being arthritis. Here, knee is kept in extension to reduce the need for quadricep activity and associated compression forces throughout the knee joint. It can be accompanied by an antalgic gait pattern, characterized by a reduced stance time and shorter step length. The next gait deviation that we will observe is genuine curvatum, or knee hyperextension during stents. Typically, the likely impairment is knee extensor weakness. It can also be caused by poliomyelitis. We observe genuine recovatum secondary to progressive stretching of the posterior capsule of the knee. The next gait deviation that we will observe is flexed knee during the stent phase of the gait cycle and lack of knee extension during the swing phase of the gait cycle. First, likely impairment can be knee flexion contraction or hamstring spasticity. This can be secondary to upper motor neuron lesion. It's associated with increase in hip flexion and ankle dorsiflexion during stance. Secondary impairment can be knee pain and joint effusion, secondary to trauma or arthritis. Here, the knee is kept in flexion because this is the position of the lowest intraarticular pressure. And the last gait deviation that we will look at today is reduced or absent knee flexion during the swing phase of the gait cycle. The first impairment here can be spasticity of knee extensors, secondary to upper motor neuron lesion. The second impairment can be knee extension contracture, secondary to immobilization or surgical fusion. Typically, we will observe compensatory hip hiking and or hip circumduction can be noted as well. 